Greetings, y'all. Coming to you. Got my St. Patty's Day hat on. I'm filming you on St. Filming this on St. Patty's Day. I'm not sure when this one will be released. We appreciate all the feedback and all the support. Today's question comes from Rick. Oh, I'm sorry, Cody. We're getting to Rick next. Cody writes, I'm at home, consumes a six-pack of beer. Uh, situation arises that I have to use my farm to defend myself from my family and my property. The fact that I've been drinking make me a felon. The fact that you've been drinking does not make you a felon. So let's just back up a second. So there's a lot of issues here. Um, there's really two main areas of the law that I want to talk about. The first is using weapons while intoxicated. Uh, I think the base offense is a first degree misdemeanor and it can be elevated depending on the circumstances. Uh, but regardless, uh, a first degree misdemeanor is nothing to sneeze at. It's pretty serious. You can do six months in Ohio in jail for that. So, generally speaking, in a vacuum, if you're under the influence, uh, then yes, on its face, you're committing a crime. I'll, I'll get to the situational part of it here in a minute, though. The other issue is if you have a concealed carry license and you're in a liquor establishment, it doesn't matter whether or not you're under the influence. I just want to make that distinction. If you're in a liquor establishment and you merely sip beer, you're not under the influence. I mean, you just taste it. That's a third degree felony. So just keep that in mind. This doesn't really apply to this situation. So let's tie in your facts here, or this hypothetical you gave us, Cody. You basically give us, paint us a picture that you're at home drinking a six-pack of beer, watching the Cleveland Browns lose another game. So that's why you're, you're uh, drowning out your sorrows, if you will. Um, I grew up a Browns fan, by the way. Um, anyhow, you drink, you finish off your six beer, someone kicks in the door, he's got a shotgun, he's got a ski mask on. You pick up your handgun uh, from the bookshelf and you shoot the guy dead. Cops show up, you're inebriated. You, in my opinion, I'm not committed a crime. There's some general common law, what we call common law defenses, of necessity and justification. And in law school, they always gave us the example, you're in a canoe uh, or in a, a boat by yourself out at a lake, and there's an island there with a house on it, and it says no trespass all around the island. It's a crime to trespass. But a storm arises, and you have to trespass. It was a necessity for you to do that. You had no other option, right? You were justified in your, your behavior. And, uh, you know, in self-defense, the law of self-defense doesn't say anything about being intoxicated. You just have to prove those three elements. Uh, and quite honestly, if it was me, regardless of what happens after the fact, I'm not going to let someone kick my door in and just slaughter me because I've had a few beers. That doesn't make any sense. And the law always tries to find the reasonable result. So that's my answer to that. Um, if you have any other comments, questions, concerns, drop them below. Remember, munitionsgroup.com. I'm Derek DeBrosk, gun lawyer at munitionsgroup.com. As always, remember to be safe and carry on.